Can we stand to our feet? We stand. Again, what a privilege. What a privilege to be here in God's house and to gather around the Word of God. Amen. Isn't this wonderful, folks, to be able just to study? Listen, listen. We're, we're, we're not opening up. We're not opening up Shakespeare this morning. <laughs> we're opening up the Word of God. I mean, come on, folks. This is, this is the infallible, inerrant, immutable Word of God. You say, well, man, I'd give anything if I could maybe see the president or see, but look here, folks. I've got something greater than that. You get to speak to God and God speaks to you through his Word, through his Word. Look what the Bible says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I guess it's okay to talk to yourself. David did. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth my mouth with good things. Isn't that wonderful, folks? Hey, Mick Jagger, he couldn't get no satisfaction, but we can, amen? Look here. <laughs> Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. <laughs> Let's pray. Jesus, I love you, and I praise you. Thank you for this service. Thank you for our team. Thank you for our worship. I pray now as we come to this part of the service that uh, you would make our tongue a ready rider's pen. Give your word a free course to travel. And may it find a lodging place in the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. And for all you do, we're going to praise you. For I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you today. It's a simple message. Of course, I <laughs> get real. I've never preached a complicated one. I, I want to talk to you about what does Jesus do for me? What does Jesus do for me? You say, preacher, each week I, I get ready. I come to church. I, I, I try to live for the Lord. I, I pray. I, I read my Bible. I, I, I give my resources to the, to the Lord. But, but at the end of the day, preacher, what really I wonder about is what does Jesus do for me? I, I read a true story. It was a story about a lady named Ramona. Ramona was a bitter lady. And she was a bitter lady because she was blind. She couldn't see. And she was just angry toward everybody. I have learned that hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. Many times they're coming out of the hurt in their lives. They're, they're coming out of their pain. And, and she literally just didn't like people. But there was one man, his name was Daniel. And Daniel loved Ramona. He, he, he was in love with Ramona. And, and Daniel wanted to marry Ramona, but she said, I'm not going to marry you till I can see. I'm blind and, and I can't see. And they said it was around Christmas time that Ramona got a pair of eyes. And when she got a pair of eyes, what amazed her was Daniel was blind too. And Daniel said, I want to marry you. And she said, no, I want to marry somebody who can see. I don't want to be married to a blind person. So she got into another relationship and dropped Daniel. And Daniel sent her a card, and this is what the card said. I love you. I'll probably always love you. I hate it turned out the way it did. But P.S., take care of my eyes. Now, here's what hit my mind. I thought Daniel was very good to Ramona. But then I thought, the Lord's been very good to us. And if we're not awful careful, folks, we can be like Ramona. And we just take things for granted and not have an attitude of gratitude. 
and not really realize all the Lord has done for us. And if we can put our mind around today for just a little while, what the Lord's done for us, I believe we'll leave here today different people. You say, well, preacher, what, what has the Lord done for every one of us? Well, first of all, folks, get this. He shifts, <laughs> he shifts my past. He shifts my past. Look what Psalms 103 verse 3 says. Look what he says. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. By the way, folks, aren't you glad that word all is in there? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Iniquities. What, 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 does, what does God do? Well, I, I think right quickly he does four things for us. I think he takes us from a sinner to salvation. He takes us from a sinner to salvation. The Bible says in Revelation 1 and 5, unto him that loved us. And I just want you to know today, folks, God loves you. God loves you. Unto him that loved us, but folks, it goes farther than that. Unto him that loved us, and look at this, and washed us. <laughs> Unto him, oh, get, no, you're not with me. You're not tracking. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins. How'd he do it? In his own blood. <laughs> What will wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. See, on the seventh day of the 10th month, that high priest would take a lamb, folks. It was a lamb without spot and it was a lamb without blemish. And he'd cut the throat of that baby lamb. And that blood would flow into a bucket. And then he'd take that bucket and he'd go into the Holy of Holies. And he'd spread that blood on the mercy seat. What was he doing? He was making an atonement. He was making a covering for the sins of the people for another year. But he had to do it the next year. And he had to do it the next year. And he had to do it the next year. He knew every year at 3 o'clock he'd have to cut that lamb's throat and that blood would flow down at 3 o'clock. By the way, that's why when Jesus was on the cross at 3 o'clock, he cried out and said, it is finished. It is finished. But let me tell you, one day John the Baptist was baptizing and he looked up on the hillside and he saw Jesus, the Lamb of glory. And he said these words in John 1 and 29, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, come on folks. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world he didn't come to rub our sins in he came to rub our sins out what the lord do for us a sinner to salvation but he does something else for us that is a slave to a son a slave to a son look what john says look what john says in john chapter 8 verily verily or truly truly i say unto you Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. What happens, folks? We become a slave to sin. We become a slave to sin. And you say, preacher, I can't overcome that. I'm just a slave to my sin. Preacher, look, I, I can't overcome the math issue because I'm a slave to math. Preacher, I can't overcome the pornography. Every day I have to log on and I have to get my fix of pornography. Preacher, I can't overcome the bitterness in my life because of what my ex did to me. I, I, I just, you don't understand what I've been through. Preacher, I can't overcome it. What's happening, folks? We've become a servant to sin. But the Bible says, and the servant abideth not in the house forever. <laughs> but the Son abideth ever. And wait, if the Son therefore 
shall make you free. You're free indeed. You're free indeed. There was a prodigal. I mean, he was a son, but he, but he left the father's house. He, 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 he left the father's house. People say, Brother Benny, do you think it's important to go to church? I'm not a mechanic, but a car usually starts missing before it completely stops. It usually starts missing before it completely stops. Uh, he said, I, I, I'm only, I've had enough of this church stuff. I've had enough. I, I'm going down to the crystal pistol. There's some lounge lizards I want to hang around with for a little while. I, I'm, I'm going to go down there and get tore up from the floor up. I just want to make this statement. One time, some disciples left Jesus, and Jesus said, are you also going to leave me? And the disciples said, where do we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. I just want to remind you, folks, you may decide you're going to leave, but where are you going to go? Because I just want to remind you, there's not anything better than Jesus. I just want you to know there's nothing better than Jesus. There's nothing better than Jesus. There's nothing better than Jesus. And he said, I'll tell you what I think I'll do. I've tried it down here. I've gotten the pig pen. Because see, always remember, folks, sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and make you pay more than you want to pay. See, this, let me tell you what sin will do. Sin will thrill, and then it will kill. Sin will fascinate, and then it will assassinate. He said, I'm a son, but I can't be a son anymore. I'm going to go back to daddy's house, but I'm going to tell him, daddy, I'll just be a servant. Whew. Look what happened. He goes back home and the father said to the servants, bring forth the best robe. How is it when we come back home? Bring forth the best robe and put, put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. You got to understand the slaves went barefooted. <laughs> he said, he's not a slave. He's my son. He's not a slave. He's my son. He's not a slave. See, folks, let me tell you something. There's a shifting in our past. We go from a sinner to salvation. We go from a slave to a son. We go from an old creature to a new creature. Someone said, preacher, I need to turn over a new leaf. No, no, no. You don't need a new leaf. You need a new life. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. <laughs> he shifts our past. Oh, get this, folks. We go from a sinner to salvation. We go from a slave to a son. We go from an old creature to a new creature. Wait. We go from darkness to light. And, and can I, I want to say this, folks? Lost people are in the dark. Lost people are going to act like lost people. We just need to make sure that we as saved people act like saved people. Amen. Amen. Look what the scripture says. Then spake Jesus again unto them, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He shifts our past. Psalms 103 verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You, you can measure north-south pole, 
But you can't measure east from west. It's immeasurable. And that's what the Lord has done with our sins. It's immeasurable. They're cast into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered against us. A man is an open air salvation army meeting. He had a checkered past. And at this open air salvation army meeting, he was given a testimony of what God's done in his life. Given a testimony. And a heckler stood up and said, sit down and shut up. You're just dreaming. True story. And that heckler felt a tug on the coat. And he said he looked down and there was a little girl in a pretty little dress. And she said these words, that man's my daddy. And that man used to drink all the time. He drank alcohol, but my daddy didn't drink anymore. And she said, this dress I've got, I used to never have a dress like this, but she said, now I've got two more just like it at home. And she said, my daddy used to come in and hit my mama and my mama would cry, but he doesn't do that anymore. And my mama smiles all the time. My mama even smiles when she's ironing. (laughs) And she said, sir, my daddy may be dreaming, But whatever you do, don't wake him up. Whatever you do, don't wake him up. Wait. What does Jesus do for me? And what has Jesus done for me? He shifts my past. Let me tell you what else he does for me. He shares my present. He shares my present. Psalms 103, verse 5, he satisfieth my mouth with good things. 40% of Americans say, I don't have a best friend. 40% say, I really don't have a friend. But folks, I want to tell you about my friend. I I, want to tell you, I I mean, he's a friend like no other friend. Listen, uh, there's never been a friend like the Lord's always been. Amen? I mean, folks, I want to tell you about this friend of mine. First of all, he's my partner. What do you mean, preacher, he's your partner? Well, Well, look what the scripture says. A man who had friends must show himself friendly. Now, 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 by the way, folks, That's not the message, but that is a good message. I went down there to church and nobody spoke to me. Well, why didn't you speak to somebody? I went down there and nobody was kind to me. Well, why is it their responsibility to be kind to you? Here's a thought, Leroy. Why don't you be kind to somebody? I went down there, nobody really cared about me. Well, here's the thought, Janice. Why don't you care about somebody? I've never gone home and said, Barbara, I'm hurt. Why, Benny? Nobody spoke to me. <laughs> that's, that's our responsibility. To think somebody ought to speak to you in light of who you are, that's audacious anyway. You say, well, Pastor Benny, I don't, you know, I'm probably not coming back here. Well, <laughs> might as well load your wagon while I got you here. Amen. <laughs> but look what it says. There is a friend whew, that stick up closer than a brother. Man, is that something? There is a friend, sister, that stick up closer than any brother. What what kind of friend is he? Well, look what Matthew says. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Wait. Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. 
You see, Brother Benny, why did, why does it say he only goes that far? He's with us to the end of the world. Well, think about it. At the end of the world, you're with him. He's with you to the end of the world, and then at the end of the world, you're with him. God said, no, I want you to build this boat. Whew, wow. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, about the size of the Queen Mary. And I got to do this, Lord. And I'm going to be in it. I don't know how long. He was actually in it over a year with all these animals. But look what, look, look this, folks. Look what the Bible says. And the Lord said unto Noah, come now and all thy house in the ark. Did you get that, folks? Not go in, but come in. Not go in, but come in. What was he saying? I'm already in here. I'm with you, Noah. God said, Moses, I need you to deliver my people. Moses, I can't talk plain. I can't, no, you don't understand, God. I, I, I don't talk real good. I can relate. Every time I preach, I invent new words. <laughs> I do, but don't misunderestimate me. <laughs> That's what I invented. Moses said, I can't talk real good. Look what God said to Moses. Moses, I'll be with thee. Joshua said, I can't follow Moses. He was the greatest leader. I, I just can't follow him. And God said, I'm going to be with you. Gideon said, I'm the least of the tribes. I can't deliver the Israelites from the Midianites. And God said to Gideon, I'll be with thee. Boy, we've got a partner, folks. But not only do we have a partner, he's given us a plan. What's the plan? It's in Matthew 6, verses 33 and 34. Here's the plan. You put me first. You don't worry about anything. And you just live one day at a time. Is that a good plan, folks? Because worry won't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It will empty today of its strength. <laughs> Worry is like a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do, but it won't take you anywhere. <laughs> Joni Erickson taught us, said, when I was 17, I had a diving accident, and I was paralyzed. And she said, I was paralyzed. And I would go up to people, and I would say, cut my wrist. I want to die. She said, I'd take that wheelchair and I'd find a concrete wall and as fast as I could roll that wheelchair into that concrete wall, I'd do it trying to kill myself. She said, I wanted to die. But she said, finally, I told the Lord, God, if I can't die, show me how to live. God, if I can't die, show me how to live. And I realized that God had a plan for my life. And one night I was being interviewed on Larry King Live and Larry King asked me, said, will you ever get out of that chair and walk? She said, yes. She said, I will, Larry. She said, I've been in it over 50 years and I may not hear. But she said, one day I'm going to get to heaven and I'm going to walk. I'm going to run. I'm going to dance. And she said, Larry, I'm going to take this chair and I'm going to cast this chair into hell. He said, how can you say that? She said, because the Bible says in Psalms 103, verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. And if God doesn't do it here, God's going to do it there because he promised me he's going to do it. Look, God's our partner. <laughs> Jesus has got a plan because he's got a purpose for our lives. We were made on purpose for a purpose. 
He's got a purpose for our lives. Now look, let me tell you what he does for us. He shifts our past. He shares my present, but he shapes my future. He shapes my future. Look what the Bible says in this Psalm. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto his children's children. What do you mean, preacher? He, he shapes my future. Well, look what he gives us, folks. And I, I'm almost done. He gives us a perspective of hope. A perspective of hope. Why, why, why can we be people of hope? Because young people, listen to Pastor Benny. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Look, I don't have any more answers than you have. If you think I need to see Benny, he'd have the answers. No, no, you don't need to see Pastor Benny. I don't have the answers. I'm not the answer man. But I will tell you this. God's working all things for your good. God's working all things for your good. You say, Brother Benny, I don't understand. I don't always understand. But young people, old people, middle-aged people, recycled teenagers, God is working all things for your good. It may take another world to reveal it, but it won't matter then anyway. But God is working all things for your good. If it's not good today, it will be good. Because God is working all things for your good. And God is working all things for your good. And God is working all things for your And God is working all things. And God, oh, folks, can we just take a praise break? God is working all things for good. And look, then he gives us a promise of power over death. Friend, you don't have to live your life fearing death because he gives you a promise of power over death. In John chapter 11, Jesus said unto the sister, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, is that us folks? He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. <laughs> and whosoever liveth, I'm sorry, folks. I believe if a mosquito would bite me right now, it would leave singing there's power in the blood. Amen. Look here. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. A church was having service one day and somebody got sick and they said, well, for the ambulance to come, it's, it's about 20 minutes for them to get here. And they said, we've got a guy in the church. He's a funeral director and his hearse is here. Let's put him in the back and let him lie down. And the guy gets in back of that hearse. They're moving fast, taking him to the hospital. It's got windows in each side. And some ladies pull up in a convertible. And he lifts his head up. And he winks at them. <laughs> and they run off the side of the road. Friends, let me tell you something. We can wink at death because we know Jesus Christ. We can wink at death because of the power of Jesus Christ. Let me, I'm, I'm done. A perspective of hope, but a prepared 
place for the future. Hail. By the way, folks, there is a hail. But it was not prepared for any of you. It was not prepared for any person. You say, preacher, is that right? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. It's not, it wasn't prepared for any of you. Any of us. Matthew 25 verse 41 says, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell wasn't prepared for you. <laughs> but heaven was. <laughs> Listen, I was on a ship this week. I, I got on the ship in Boston and I went up to Maine. I'm, I'm preaching. I, I got on a ship in Boston. I, I, I went up through Maine and up through Nova Scotia and on up to Canada. And I'm preaching. And I'd stand out there and I'd look. And I thought, boy, this is beautiful. But God, you did it all in six days. And you've been working on heaven for 2,000 years. Wow. Wow. What's it going to be like? Wow, I don't know. Because I hadn't seen, nor his ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God had prepared for them that love him. I just say, wow. But I know John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. No, wait. And I go and prepare a place for you. I go and prepare a place for you. Preacher, tell me what it's going to be like. And I'm, I'm done. Well, I can't put my mind around this. But Revelation 21 and 4 says this. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So when you get there, can you imagine the creator of this universe? <laughs> the creator of this universe <laughs> wipes the last one away. <laughs> Just wipes the last one away. You see, preacher, many, what happens after that? Well, the Bible tells us in Genesis 25 and 8, it tells what's going to happen to you. I want everybody to shut your eyes. Shut your eyes. We're not done yet. I'm just getting you to shut your eyes. Think about somebody that you love that's in heaven. Just think about them. Think about them for just a few moments. They're there. Now you can look back at me. What's gonna happen? When you get there, you're gonna be gathered to your people. Not because Benny Tate said it, but because the Bible says it. You're going to be gathered. There'll be husbands gathered to a wife. There'll be parents gathered to children. <laughs> There'll be children gathered to parents. Won't it be wonderful there? What else is going to happen? Well, 1 John 3 and 2 tells us. Then we'll go to Jesus. The one that we've sang about, preached about, prayed to, studied about, given to. And we'll get to see Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We'll get to see the one 
Jesus, the Lamb of glory, the one who's responsible for us being there. What does he do? Does it really pay, Benny? Oh, it pays. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It pays to live for him and the retirement plans out of this world. <laughs> because he shifts my past. And when I'm all alone, he says, you're not alone, I'm with you. I'm gonna share your present. But I'm gonna shape your future. When you finally make your entrance to that city of Jasper walls and bright golden avenues, as you behold all its beauty and splendor, remember there's just one request I make of you. Look for me. For I will be there too. I realize when you arrive, there'll be so much to view. But when you've been there 10,000 years, a million, maybe two, look for me for I will be there too you've done for us can we tell him that thank you Lord for what you've done for us look here I don't know you but I want you to go too I want you to go too brother Benny how can I by putting your faith in Jesus just for a moment every head's bowed and every eyes closed no one's looking. Pastor Benny, I'm here today and I know you won't call my name or embarrass me. I will not. But Pastor Benny, I don't know that I'm right with Christ. But there's something missing in my life, Pastor Benny, and I just really need you to pray for me. If you would like for me to pray for you today, I won't call your name. I won't bring attention to you. But Pastor Benny, I want you to pray for me. Hold your hand up real high where I can see it. God bless you. 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 I'm waiting on your hand today. I'm in no hurry. God bless you in the back. God bless you in the middle section. I'm waiting. I'm in no hurry. I've got all day. Ma'am, God bless you. I, I, I've got all day. I'll stay with you all day. Son, I see your hand back here. I've got all day. This is what service is really all about. It's not about, this is what it's all about. Every head bowed, every eye closed. That's what it's about. Pastor Benny, I raise my hand. I'm watching online. If you're watching online, you're in one of our campuses, pray this prayer with me. Say these words. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, but God, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died on the cross, shed your blood for my sin, and I confess my sin to you right now. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my life and forgive me. Now, God, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, I prayed that prayer with you. Hold your hand up. 
Lift it up. That's it. Lift your hand up and leave it up. That's it. Lift your hand. That's it. Leave, leave, leave your hand up. Just, just keep them up. That's it. 